Hey, hi, and howdy, sweet friends. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome if you are new. I'm Courtney. I do food and kitchen content on my channel here. That's like weekly grocery hauls, what's for dinner style videos, things of that nature. So if you love watching that stuff, I really hope you'll hit that subscribe button and stick around. All right, it is time for my weekly meal prep. I started meal prepping um, probably a little bit over a month ago, and it was a game changer. I just stick with it. I meal prep on one day and it usually takes an hour and a half or less and it feeds my family for the week. So my weeknights are super simple. So we're going to kick it off with our theme of the week, which is rotisserie chicken. Check out that price. These are from Walmart. I got them on the markdown section. They were $1.51 each. I actually grabbed six of them and I just tossed them in my freezer when I got home because I knew obviously I'd find something for them. So I pulled these three out and I thought, okay, this is what we're going to do. Now, if you don't have a rotisserie chicken, obviously you can shred some chicken in your crock pot or just cook it on the stovetop or use canned chicken, whatever you want to do. Or you could use uh, turkey or even pork for a lot of these. But I'm going to be using those chickens. So I just shredded all three of them into one giant bowl. All right, we're going to start off by making some cream of soup. It's going to be cream of chicken. Normally, I have like a powder mix that I use and I used all of it. I think it was actually in my last video. And I went to go make more and I realized that I was out of one of my ingredients. So I could not even make more of my powder mix. So we're going old school and just making an entire cream of soup from scratch, which is really not that hard to do. Uh, I'm making about two cans worth. So I took four tablespoons of butter and melted them in my skillet. Then I added in about four to five tablespoons of flour and I whisked it up really nicely. I let it cook for a couple of minutes and I like to throw my dry powdered seasonings in while I'm doing this because that way they toast and it kind of helps bring them back to life. They can get a little stale. There's nothing wrong with them, but they do get like a little stale and they start to lose some of their vibrance. Just toasting them a little brings all that right back. So I throw uh, some onion powder in there. And then I like to do a mix of um, beef and chicken broth just because I think beef broth tastes better, but I'm making cream of chicken soup. So I just did a mix of both. I'm going to be using four cups of liquid. So for me, my bouillon says one teaspoon per cup of water. So I did two of the beef and two of the chicken. And then as far as liquids go, you could do all water. It would be less creamy, but it would be dairy free. I'm going to do a half and half. So half milk, half water. I want a little creaminess, but I'm not like wanting a ton of dairy in there. So that's just how I decided to do it. And I add those ingredients in and I whisk really, really well because as it heats up, you want to make sure you whisk those clumps out and just so it's nice and smooth and creamy. And we're going to just let this come up to a simmer and thicken. I like to throw a little pepper in mine and a little parsley, but that's totally up to you. You don't have to do either of those. You don't even have to put the onion powder in there if you don't want to, but I just think it tastes better that way. And like I said, we're making two cans worth of cream of soup just because we're going to need it for two separate recipes. And it'll just thicken like a gravy as it simmers, which is exactly what we want. It's really easy to make. Um, I typically, typically will do a cream of mushroom soup where I have some dehydrated mushrooms I keep on hand and throw them in there. But today I just really needed cream of mush or cream of chicken. That really was all I required. And it takes less ingredients. So I threw this together. And you can see how just using pantry ingredients... We can throw together a can of so soup. You don't even have to buy one from the store. Now, if you have some, that's great. I used to always keep it on hand. It is very shelf stable. I'm also going to go ahead and prep this box of stuffing right there. There we go. I got it to fit. Um, it's actually two boxes in one that I picked up off the clearance rack. Any brand, any flavor will do. I recommend two for the casserole. And I'm also letting these vegetables thaw on my counter for a separate recipe. So I went ahead and just divided this in half. I've got half of it in a different container off to the side for our next dish. And into this this bit that's left on the stove, like I said, it, it's about two cups worth, um, about a can worth of cream and mushroom soup. I'm going to stir in some shredded chicken. I'm trying to just divide it into thirds since I had three rotisserie chickens, so about one rotisserie chicken worth. Now, of course, you could always add less chicken or whatever meat you've decided to use. Um, I just had these rotisserie chickens, so I'm really packing it full of meat. I'm going to let that simmer for just a second because my chicken was still slightly frozen. And I'm going to let it release a little bit of the water from the frozen chicken. Hopefully it doesn't get too liquidy. We'll see. And I could just kind of simmer that up for a minute to thicken it. I was working on the mock chicken pot pie and I was going to serve it with just bread or biscuits, which I do pretty frequently. When it dawned on me, I had these two little bags of mixed potatoes in my pantry and I needed to use them so that they didn't go bad. And chicken pot pie typically has some potatoes in it. So I thought, 
okay, let's just serve the pot pie mix over roasted potatoes. So I just hopped over to the counter and diced those up. I seasoned them with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And I'm going to put them in my air fryer at 400 degrees for like 15-ish minutes just to roast them. They're going to be the perfect base for our mock chicken pot pie. Okay, so while those are roasting, I went back to working on my chicken and stuffing casserole. The chicken and the cream of soup had come to a simmer. It was a perfect texture the perfect mix i like mine kind of thick now i'm going to link the original recipe that spawned this entire dish for me um i typically don't follow it because it calls for sour cream and for this dish i can always taste the sour cream and my husband doesn't like sour cream so this is how i typically will do it but you can kind of just make it your own if you want to follow uh that recipe and you want to use some sour cream that is fine just kind of make it how your family's going to like it and of course using what you have on hand so for us, that meant I'm going to make homemade cream of soup and there's no sour cream. So I just took my chicken and cream of soup mixture and I am putting it in the bottom of a greased casserole dish. It will stick a little bit if you don't grease it. So I just use some avocado oil spray and just spritz it a little bit. And I'm just kind of like spreading it out in a nice even layer. And if I see any larger chunks of my shredded chicken, just kind of breaking them up a little bit. My stuffing mix is completely made. You know, you just mix it with a little bit of butter and water, hot water, and let it set for a minute. And so I'm just taking that and I'm gonna spread it over the top of the chicken. Um, I did two boxes because as you can see, one rotisserie chicken makes a good size casserole dish. You could always shrink this down. It doesn't have to be this big. That's just what I have chosen to do. I am feeding a bunch of people for quite a few days. So um, it's nice for me to have a large portion. Now you will notice that this casserole does not have any vegetables in it. I try to always mix some sort of vegetable into my casserole. This one doesn't, so I am going to opt to serve it with a bag of frozen mixed vegetables at the end. I think it's called a Normandy mix that I picked up from Sam's Club. But overall, this casserole is so delicious. It's so packed full of flavor because that stovetop stuffing mix is just full of flavor. And of course, I got the chicken. It pairs beautifully with any kind of shredded poultry and it just I don't know it's that time of year really that's probably what it is it's we're getting into fall we're thinking of the fall food and Thanksgiving and all that so this just sounded so delicious anyway once you've got it all in there and you spread it out nicely pop it in a 350 degree oven and let it get crispy and browned on top all right the rest of our cream of chicken soup is now in the skillet and I'm adding in those vegetables I've had thawing on the counter uh, I had a like a massive bag, so you would really just use one of those. I think it's like a 12 ounce bag from Walmart. It might be 16 ounces. I, I like a lot of veggies in mine. Of course, you can use whatever vegetable mix you want to as well. This is a mock chicken pot pie, so I just kind of go with typical mixed veggies. And of course, that bag of mixed vegetables at Walmart is, I believe, 98 cents, so it's very economical as well. So I mix the veggies and one rotisserie chicken worth of chicken together with the can or you know a can's worth of cream of chicken soup and for this i don't want it quite as tight as it is i want it to be a little bit looser so i've got the um the burner going just to kind of melt the frozen vegetables a little bit more and let some of the water from them get mixed in and then when it did that it wasn't as as thinned out as i want it to be so you'll see i add a little bit of water as well just to make it a little more saucy now to this, um, I'm not adding a ton of stuff in, but I did add some sage. Poultry seasoning is also a great choice. The cream of soup is very, it's got enough salt in it. It's very seasoned because I put the onion powder in it. And of course the beef bouillon especially has a ton of flavor in it. So I don't feel like I need to add a lot of things to it. It already has a lot of flavor. Um, but I did want a little bit of poultry seasoning just because when I think of any kind of chicken pot pie, it always kind of makes me think of poultry seasoning, that kind of flavor blend. So I just threw some sage in because that's typically the main flavor I get from that. And here I am adding that water because it was still really tight and I wanted it just a little bit looser. Um, so I added in, I guess about a cup of water in total and it thinned out just perfectly to where I wanted it, where it was still thick, but it was a little bit saucy. So I could just kind of pour it on top of those roasted potatoes. And this was a nice hearty dish that again was really economical. Of course, I know those potatoes look like fancy ones, but I actually got them on sale. I think they were like a dollar something a bag um, about two weeks ago or so. So everything I use, I try to pick it up when it's on sale or 
if it's just an economical ingredient, you know, things like that. I do try to keep the cost down. So even when you see me using more expensive things like shrimp, I can usually get those on sale for four something a pound and I stock up when I see them. And then I'm able to have things like that on hand for meal prepping for a really, really great price. All right, so our mock chicken pot pie is done. We're waiting for the potatoes to finish. And while we're doing that, we'll get started on our third meal, which is gonna be a chicken burrito casserole. This is super easy and I'm gonna link the original recipe. So you can use that if you want, or you can follow my lead. I'm kind of using it and kind of not all at the same time. So I have got a little bit of oil in my skillet and I threw in two cups of dry uncooked rice. And I let that just kind of toast up for a couple of minutes. And then like I do with everything else, we wanna put our powdered spices and seasonings in now just to kind of wake them up a little bit. So for this kind of a Mexican style rice, I'm gonna need a combination of beef and tomato bouillon. Now, if you don't have tomato bouillon, you can go with beef and chicken. It's still gonna be really good. Um, but if you do have tomato bouillon, I just think it tastes better in here. But fair warning, tomato bouillon is super, super salty, way more salty than the other ones. So I never add any salt into this because it's just already so salty on its own. It's not overpowering, but just beware, don't add any salt because it's got a ton. But I'm gonna go ahead and let the bouillons toast for a minute, wake them up. And then I'm gonna add in some water. Now, my perfect ratio for rice is for every one cup of rice, I would add in one and three quarters cup of water. So for two cups of rice, I was gonna need three and a half cups of water. So I wanted to kind of split it between mostly water, but a little bit of that picante sauce I showed you there. So I went ahead and added in an entire cup of picante sauce and the rest of it I did with water. Picante is great because it has a bunch of different veggies in it. It's got onions and garlic and peppers and tomatoes. It's got a bright flavor and it's very inexpensive. So it'll really kind of amp up flavors if you're doing any kind of Mexican themed meal. And typically like at Walmart, I can get a good size jar for $2 or that big container I had was about five. And it is a ton of salsa. So it goes a really long way. I'm going to let the rice cook just like you normally do. Lid on, burner on low. Uh, for about 20-ish minutes. Now, my potatoes are done, so I am now assembling these bowls. I thought I would show you how I'm doing these. I don't always show you how I assemble the bowls. I feel like a lot of them are pretty like cut and dry and self-explanatory, but for these, I thought I'd show it. So I just divvied up my potatoes into as many bowls as I felt I needed for them. Uh, for this particular one, I was able to get seven meals. I think that's pretty good. Uh, those bags of potatoes are not big, but it really did make a ton of potatoes. And as you can see, I'm pretty generous with them. There's a lot of food in these bowls and it's definitely a filling meal. So once I've got the potatoes all divided, I'm gonna go ahead and add my mock chicken pot pie topping right over the top. So it's almost like a chicken and veggies and a cream gravy over roasted potatoes. It's definitely got the fall feels. Um, I feel like most of my meals this week have the fall feels but that's just because we're kind of getting into those fall months. I mean, I'm in Texas, so it's still blazing hot down here, but I'm seeing all the decorations. I know that Halloween's coming and Thanksgiving's coming, and I'm just kind of getting in that mood. And um, I think it's kind of infiltrating into my meal planning for sure. But here are my mock chicken pot pies. These are easy. They're economical. And most of all, they're delicious. My family loves them. All right, there is our rice. I let it just simmer on low for 20 minutes and it's nice and cooked and fluffy. So I'm gonna add in the last of my shredded chicken. And I'm also, after I stir this around, I'm gonna add in two additional ingredients. You can add in as many things as you want or whatever you want really. But for me to make these like a chicken burrito casserole, I just kind of automatically went to black beans and corn. Um, I don't know why. I, I just, that's what I always think of when I think of burrito bowls and stuff like that. I'm using these seasoned black beans. I did drain them, but I did not rinse them because they're seasoned and they have a very nice flavor. And then I'm also adding in one can of drained corn. Now, if you wanted to throw some green chilies in here, they'd be fantastic as well. This casserole would also be good with any kind of ground pork or ground turkey or ground beef. Um, really any kind of shredded meat would be good in this one, but I went with chicken because I had gotten those ridiculously cheap rotisserie chickens. So I made some really great meals with them. Now I'm just going to put these in the bowls to portion them out, but you could also top them with cheese if you want to. We just haven't been doing much with cheese lately. All right. And here are those um, bowls I'm making for the chicken and stuffing casserole. Just showing you, I was pouring some frozen veggies directly in there. Um, they're frozen. It's fine. Everything's going to heat up in the microwave together. So it's not a big deal, but I love the colors of this. I don't know. It just looks really appealing. Some bright, pretty colors, very fall. And there's my chicken burrito bowls. Again, you could put 
cheese over the top if you want to. We just haven't really been doing as much cheese, but the flavor was on point with these. So, so good. And of course, our mock chicken pot pie. I guess these look a little bland. I don't know. Um, chicken pot pie is not my favorite, but it is my husband's favorite. So he ranted and raved about them. He loved them. He thought they were fabulous and they were super easy. And again, very affordable. So those are my meals for this week. Made a ton of food. I hope you guys enjoyed them. All the original recipes are linked below so you can give them a shot yourself at home. I hope you'll have a fabulous weekend and I will see you guys back here on Tuesday with my grocery haul. Grocery, grocery haul. Gosh, I can't even talk. Y'all have a great one, guys. Bye.